everyone. Welcome to Paw Paw's Workshop. You know, if you use the Easel and Easel Pro, you know that you get four free days a month. But what happens if you run out of those four days and you still need to carve something? Well, today I had a last minute project that I needed to carve and I needed to use the V-Bit. So today I'm going to show you how to do it. Let's get started. To begin with, this is the wood that I'm using for this project. It's a leftover from a Christmas tree. Yep, that's right. This is the trunk of a Christmas tree. And we're going to cut it and make this into the project. Now, I'm not going to show you all the steps. But basically, we just cut it on the chop saw into the thin slices. And then put it in a small toaster oven at about 200 degrees for about two hours to be able to dry the wood. The first step in doing this project is to be able to make sure that the wood is completely flat and parallel to the gantry. So to be able to do that, I need to create a circle. And I need this circle to be larger than the project itself. The project is about three and a quarter by three and a half inches. So if I make this circle at four inches, and I'm gonna lock this right here, and then I'm gonna highlight it and make this four inches. I know that this four inch circle is going to cover the entire surface of my project. And that's what I want. The next thing is I want to make sure that this is a fill. And I want to be able to carve this down only about three or four hundredths of an inch. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and set the depth at 0 .4, 0.04. So that's four hundredths of an inch and that should work just fine for this project. So with this now set to carve at the four hundredths and it's set for a fill and it's designed to cover the entire project, all we need to do is put it into position. And to be able to do that, I have my center point selected here and I'm just going to move it over to my XY axis of zero. And now I have it centered right here on the XY zero point. Let's go carve this. After cutting it on the chop saw, I used my glue and tape method to secure the wood to the CNC table. The next thing I had to make sure that the surface was completely flat and parallel to the gantry. So I used a three quarter inch flat bit and be able to surface this material so I knew that it was 100% parallel and flat to my gantry. Very, very important step, and you can't leave this step out. First thing I want to discuss is what is the difference between Easel and Easel Pro? Well, there's really two factors. One is the text, and two is the V-bit. So let's look at the text first. So if I come up and highlight the text box, you're going to see a lot of the different fonts. Some of them have the pro symbol next to it, and some do not. In Easel, any font that you select that does not have the pro next to it does not activate the Easel Pro. You can also add additional fonts that are in the pro feature by simply clicking on the add fonts it brings you up to a drop down menu and it says font library for pro. So all of these different fonts will activate the easel pro function. Now remember you have four free days a month to be able to use the easel pro before you have to be able to pay for it. So I would say plan and plan wisely. But in my case, I had one extra project that I needed to do and I was out of my four free days. Now then, the next factor that you've got to consider is the bits. To activate the Easel Pro, it activates based on the V bits. So any V bit that you have shown here or that you click here and key in the actual width is going to trigger the Easel Pro function and utilize one of your four free days or activate it where you would have to pay for the Easel Pro. So those are the two factors. Now what I did in my case is I went ahead and selected a font that was not a pro font. And the next thing that I did 
as I selected a bit, let me drop down this menu, as I selected in this category, which does not trigger the Easel Pro, and I click Other, and I put in here for the bit width at 0 0.010. That will allow me to be able to carve this now without triggering the Easel Pro. Now this is a 60 degree V-bit. It's actually a white side uh, V-bit that I had purchased. And the point on this is extremely sharp. So which really means there's no flat point on this bit at all. So normally I use a 0.015 in easel, but in this case, I changed it to a 0 0.010 to make it even smaller. And that actually worked very well. And you can see that it did come out very crisp, very clean in this wood carving. Now this project required me to do a two side carving. So once the first side was done, I flipped it over and did the exact same thing. I surfaced this material again so that it would be flat and parallel to the gantry. To you easel in this manner, it made it where the machine itself thought that it was cutting with a 0 .010 straight bit. And in reality, I have this 60 degree V bit in, which actually makes it where it still carves very, very crisp and sharp with fine details. The carving for this project was done at a depth of 0 0.05. Yes, that is shallow, and again, that's why it was so important that the material to be flat. Now, the painting consisted of the same type of process that I have used in the past, where I completely sealed the wood first and then painted in the red color. From there, once the paint was dry, I sanded off the surface and then seal the wood one remaining time. I think the results are remarkable and it did not activate a pro day. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.